Okay, maybe we should begin. Uh, welcome everybody. My name is Lee Radzikowski. I'm a professor here in the physics department. I'm also the director and organizer of these Boulder summer schools for the past 23 years. Kind of sounds mind boggling uh, when I say this. Were all of you born by then when we, when we started the school? I don't know. Uh, anyway, welcome to Boulder. So before we turn to the full program, uh, scientific program, I wanted to just say a few words uh, about the school and give you some background on it. And then uh, our scientific organizers will say a few words about the program and their vision for it. Uh, so yeah, so this is where we are. Uh, welcome everybody, this is a 22nd school, it should be 23rd, but COVID ha uh, had other ideas. Uh, uh, this is the scenery that you will undoubtedly have seen and hopefully we'll explore on weekends. Uh, so the school was uh, conceived by Steve Gervin uh, in uh, 1999 or something like this. And uh, then it was founded by these four guys uh, in 2000. That, that was our first inaugural school on superconductivity. Uh, and in, in fact, uh, uh, Alan Dorsey here in the audience was uh, one of the lecturers in that inaugural school. And many of the people you probably know in this matter community were students in that school. And since have organized schools, have, uh, have sent their students to organize school, to, to, to these schools and have lectured at these schools. Uh, about 15 years ago, actually, I'm forgetting the actual time, Andy Miller stepped down and uh, his place was taken by Christina Marchetti, who undoubtedly most of you know, uh, professor at UCSB. Uh, and does active matter, hydrodynamics of active matter. Um, so university, uh, the, the school is supported by quite generously by NSF DMR uh, coming from Daryl Hess. Uh, so we thank him for it. And it's quite a lot of money to bring you all here and to house you and to feed you for a month. Uh, so uh, take advantage of it. You're uh, privileged to be able to come here. There was, uh, we're always uh, highly oversubscribed. Uh, we'll also get some support from University of Colorado, from staff and administration. Uh, we have advisory board of about 20 scientists that help us choose schools for you know, three or four years ahead. Uh, so as you continue with your careers, I hope you consider uh, suggesting and organizing schools uh, as you get into faculty positions. Uh, and in the past, we've, as I said, it's a 20, our 22nd school. If you look at the main homepage website, uh, there's a list of schools, and those are range all the way from superconductivity to biophysics to quantum information to disordered systems to hydrodynamics, soft matter, et cetera. So, and it's a great resource uh, for learning outside a classroom and beyond classroom. There's a really invaluable information about the lectures over these two decades. Uh, well, so this school is on hydrodynamics across scales, pretty broad range. Uh, you know, you know, you applied here, so you know the background. And uh, so there's a great program, uh, and it's thanks to it didn't happen by itself. And thanks to the, a lot of hard work by my scientific organizers, Brad, Jeff, Peter, and Julia, and Royce. Can you guys uh, stand up or raise your hand? Maybe stand up just so everybody knows who you are. Unfortunately, Royce uh, is going to be only uh, joining us virtually, but uh, I'm sure he'll be quite vocal and uh, will participate and we'll hear from him more. Uh, so yeah, don't hesitate to, you know, to talk to the lecturers and to speak to the, uh, to the organizers. Uh, so just some local things, some administrative things. Uh, so I have some uh, three assistants uh, who have been working really hard to make this work. Uh, the, AV is done by Tsuchi, Jack, and Sanka. Can you guys stand up just to identify yourself? Uh, so they've been really amazing and, uh, uh, and making things run smoothly. And then there's Sonia and Dakota. I don't know if they're here. I think they're doing some administrative things, but uh, all the things, you know, like the uh, hung up uh, schedules and uh, all the other things that uh, go behind the scenes, they're, they've been working hard to uh, make happen. So reimbursements will be done by Dakota and Anton. Uh, uh, here's his email. Don't worry, this will be posted so you don't have to write it down. Uh, so he's the key administrator who will be who, whose name you should know. Um, if you need library privileges, you can get them upon request. You can go into library, but you won't be able to check out books. Uh, 
but if that's all you need, then you don't need to do anything. There's a CU bike rental program. It's by UMC. You can find it in the NAP. Uh, this is a student union uh, just uh, west of us. There's a rec center facilities. You can get in there and pay at the door uh, with your name tag. Computers is just uh, Wi-Fi as you used, used to be uh, guest or you do Rome. Uh, so if you come from Europe, uh, it may sound quite draconian, but you have to adjust to U.S. Uh, 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 you know, kind of a pretty crazy loss. But you can't you can't drink. Uh, you can drink in your room if you want with a closed door. But uh, have a little party there. Uh, just make sure cops are not called. But you can't uh, drink in any public areas. There's a, uh, no open uh, no alcohol in public areas. Uh, so no meals or housing on weekends. So your meal card is provided to give you three meals a day, uh, you know, on weekdays. Uh, on the weekends, you're on your own, and that's done on purpose. So you can explore Boulder uh, restaurant scene and uh, hike and bike and do other things outside of uh, Kittredge. Yes. I don't know the numbers, uh, but it's it's very reasonable and subsidized. And in fact, there's another going to be another slide on uh, on city bike program that you you can take advantage of. There's an app. Okay, so we have all, everything you want. We can get for you. We have in the back soccer ball, volleyball, uh, basketball. So there, you know, there are courts around. If uh, somebody, you know, if you take it, please sign it out just so we know somebody's taking responsibility and then you can hold on to it for the duration of the school. But I just want to know who has it so we can get it back. Um, there's a discussion room, S106 in Buckingham. So take advantage of that after hours. Uh, past school students really took advantage of these uh, facilities. Oh, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, so in the dining hall, it's a pretty large dining hall. Uh, watch out for it. It's a little dangerous because, uh, you know, you'll, you'll gain 50 pounds if you don't watch over four weeks. Uh, it's really a lot of just amazing, amazing facility. But also it's very large, so it's easy to get lost. Usually we eat outside in good weather or by the outside west uh, exit. Uh, but also there's some special seating that we, we've reserved for you if you want to have a private room um, in a treehouse. AC works in the room, but only if you close your windows. Uh, so um, we have hiking guides in the back. Also, please sign them out uh, and uh, all kinds of maps for the surrounding area. Biking, uh, you rent on the hill. If you want a higher quality bike than just a university bike, you can rent all around the uh, town. Uh, I have tubes for tubing on the creek, uh, Boulder Creek. That's a fun, uh, be careful, but it's a fun and uh, uh, very uh, common boulder tr uh, tradition. So let me know if you need a tube. I'll bring it in. It's these giant tubes that you need to pump up. There's a Chautauqua, El Dorado Canyon, Rocky Mountain National Park, Red Rock Amphitheater, Pearl Street Mall is for fine dining and drinking. So please take advantage of it. And I'm sure you'll find more than just on this partial list. There's a B Cycle uh, app that you can download for the city bikes that are very uh, reasonably priced. And there's some codes here for our program. That's, uh, that gives you some discounts. Uh, in terms of the school, turning to more to the scientific things, you know, don't sit quietly like maybe you do in some of your classes. This is supposed to be interacting. You guys, you know, organizers, scientific organizers create the program, but to make it a success, you need to, you need to stay active, ask questions, uh, interact, don't let lectures know you, PowerPoint slides, going right through them, interrupt them. If you don't understand something, it's not just you. It means uh, the lecture, put it on the lecture, the lecture is unclear and others are not understanding. So start you know, on the right note and interrupt the lectures at any, at any time you don't understand something. Organize, stay active, organize students, seminars, discussions, tutorials. Uh, Brad here set up a Slack uh, uh, site for us. So please use it. It's a very convenient way to communicate information to the whole school. Uh, there's maybe you can start a Facebook group for, for after the school uh, is over even, uh, uh, past school students have used it to, you know, meet up for all kinds of conferences, let's say March meetings and things. Uh, so it's very useful. So if you want to, uh, initiate that, that'd be great. Active participate in a post social sessions, organize research projects, meet classmates and lecturers, and, Last but not least is t-shirts design originally needed. So approach me or one of the three grad students, uh, Tsuchi in particular, uh, to if, you, if you're uh, 
if you're interested in contributing a design, so often the final design that we'll eventually decide on is an amalgam of more than one proposal of, from several students. Um, one thing that's quite, it, we need them quite urgently because we want to have enough time to settle in the design, iterate it, settle on it, order the t-shirts and have them come back before the early, you know, early in the fourth week, the latest, because we want to make sure that we can get, the, get you the t-shirts before you leave Boulder. We don't want to be stuck with mailing out 70 t-shirts, okay? Because that's a, that would be a uh, Herculean uh, task. So we don't want to do that. So please approach me as early as you can. Emailing me is fine. Just email me, even if you have like a, just some, some uh, preliminary idea for, for uh, t-shirt design. And people can contribute different ways. Some may contribute uh, using, uh, some may contribute uh, uh, with, you know, their computer skills. Other may don't know how to render it in the computer electronically, but have a sketch. Others may just contribute with an idea of what and how to design it. And in the back, there are some past school t-shirts. We've got 22 of them. And so that's just some ideas, front, back. Uh, it, it doesn't have to, it, you don't want to have it too complicated. It's usually something on the chest and something in the back or on the front. Okay. Uh, some few more remarks. If you feel lost, find the lectures. Talk, Tough, don't be discouraged, ask questions and speakers. I've already, some of this uh, repeat, ask questions of, to the organizer. We can organize tutorials. We have extra seminar rooms. You can organize seminars. Uh, and, you know, some students, there are different backgrounds here. And depending on what uh, material is being covered that week, some are more experts than others. So, you know, take charge if you're, if you have more expertise than others, then lead a discussion, maybe organize a tutorial, show off your skills. Uh, okay, uh, so tonight we have just uh, introductions. We'll go around the room, just quick uh, introduction. Uh, let us know who you are so that people can, uh, can meet you and uh, greet you. Uh, Thursdays, first three weeks in the evening, we'll have poster sessions. They'll be upstairs in the Game of Tower on the 11th floor. Uh, but we'll have, be proceeding to that, that's at seven o'clock, but proceeding to that, we'll have a little one minute or two minute slide uh, free advertisement for your, for the, for the, for your poster. Okay. And I think we've divided all the students into three sessions. And so three poster sessions, Friday night, uh, week one, we'll have a special Indian dinner catered. So rather than eating in the, in the cafeteria in C4C on the 11th floor, we'll have a nice, uh, uh, local uh, uh, Indian dinner from so-called the Taj, uh, my favorite restaurant. Hence, since I, I I I chose it, we had to choose something. But uh, <laughs> but I, I hope you will share you will share my uh, uh, attraction to this. And then Friday at the end of each week, we'll have what have we learned? Just sort of overview of the lectures. Um, so here's the program, and now I'm going to turn it over to Brad to uh, say a few words about the scientific uh, program. Thanks very much, Leo. Um, it's been a long time coming, uh, this program. I think we first started planning it five years ago. And of course, it's been delayed a bit by uh, COVID. So thanks for your uh, faith in our uh, ideas and uh, also the advisory board's approval uh, for, for the program. So I just wanted to say a few words about um, the uh, idea behind this school which is, of course, bringing together different scales, uh, as the title implies. So uh, we really have a range of physical scales from uh, biological scales, nanofluidics, all the way up to uh, astrophysics, uh, galactic scales, maybe even some cosmology. We could have even extended it further because hydrodynamics has been invoked to describe uh, the quark gluon plasma, for instance, but we had to uh, draw the line somewhere. So these are the range of scales that we've, uh, we've chosen. And uh, the other idea I think behind this school is that these different areas don't often talk to each other. And there are lessons that have been learned in one field that might apply to another. So for example, Recently, it's been discovered that uh, topology plays a role 
in some active matter systems and geophysical fluid systems. And maybe it plays a role in some other systems that we'll discuss uh, here at this uh, at the school. Uh, likewise, non-equilibrium statistical mechanics uh, has something to say about all of these length scales. And I know that uh, some of the organizers and some of the lecturers are going to be very much focused on, on that. So um, I didn't wanna to say too much more except uh, to also urge you to uh, try out the Slack uh, channel, Slack workspace. If you haven't used it before, um, I think you'll find it uh, useful. Many people, many of you are already using it. And so there's already been some uh, interesting discussions. And uh, in particular, uh, for instance, the directions to install the Daedalus software that uh, Jeff Oishi will be uh, teaching us about uh, are, can be found on the Slack channel. So I wanted to give my co-organizers a chance to say a few words also about the uh, program. So Julia, uh, would you mind uh, standing up and... Thanks. Uh, so I'll be here for all four weeks, and so will Peter. Um, um, Peter, do you want to stand up and say something? I'm Peter Weissman. Um, I'm, I'm a condensed matter background, actually. I'm a theorist. I've worked with all the fluid dynamics. I've worked with a number of people like that. And so I'm very excited. Now, some of these lectures, I know. Most first thing here, many I, I do not know. I'm very excited. If I ask you any questions, you know what to stop me. Thanks, Peter. Jeff. Yeah. My name is Jeff White. Um, I'm a local and a professor of the Department of Atmosphere and Ocean Science here. I'm a climate scientist, geophysical fluid dynamics, and I'm really looking forward to the, the range and the scale. Feel free to uh, ask questions of lecturers. Um, I'm hopeful I'm going to be able to tell you all about my favorite subject. Whether and finally, uh, Royce, I uh, would like to say a few words. So uh, maybe, um, yeah, let's. Um... Maybe um, just the, the green, especially the green button there. Okay. okay, Rice, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, I can. Um, can you hear okay, me or ahead. see me or? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, thanks for the um, introduction, Brad. Sorry I can't be with you in person. If uh, any of your students want to talk to me, uh, just email me and we can set up a time and a mode to connect, okay? Um, anyway, as shown on the roster, my focus of um, research is non-equilibrium set neck. Uh, and as Brad said, the seeds of this school date back five years to when Jeff, uh, Brad, and I organized a four-week workshop to start a dialogue between the folks that work on climate physics and non-equilibrium set neck. And that seed mushroom, this you see, uh, across to 35 orders of magnitude. Uh, arbitrarily divided into the four arenas of uh, quantum, human, planet, and cosmic scales. So uh, welcome to this adventure. So if I may share my screen, um, just to show you a couple of slides, uh, what is the difference between equilibrium and non-equilibrium set mech? And that is, um, let's see, how do, I, how do I get my screen to, uh, I'm still, technologically challenged. So here we are. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so the main distinguished um, feature is of course, statics versus dynamics. And if you've taken courses on STEMEC, this is the only thing you've learned. 
this is that if you have a system that is in isolation, Boltzmann's hypothesis apply. Otherwise, Boltzmann's factor applies. And uh, from there, you just compute. Uh, on the other hand, if you do dynamics, there are two types of non-equilibrium that you need to think about. <clears throat> One is that the system is isolated and evolves toward equilibrium, but you don't know what the time dependencies look like. So this is one big unknown, and of course that's extremely difficult. The other area, which is somewhat more interesting for life around us, is that if your system is coupled to two reservoirs and there's a constant flux of energy, unlike this system in which it goes back and forth alone. And in this case, things are so difficult because the dynamics does not uh, obey time reversal anymore because there's a constant flux that goes uh, this way. Here, the dynamics obeys time reversal. The result is that even if it comes to a steady state, we have no idea what it is in general. And of course, the reason that it's important is that you live in this environment and essentially all life begins, uh, is, is part of something like that. And you hear lots about active matter and so on and so forth. So because we don't have an overarching um, uh, framework for non-equilibrium physics, we try to explore things one setting at a time, and there's good setting for it is hydrodynamics. Indeed, there's a famous picture from Feynman's blackboard at the time of his death, and that's what it looks like. And one of the items to learn is nonlinear classical hydrodynamics. And so that was the idea behind bringing the experts and the frontiers of this field to come and entice you down this garden path hoping that one of you would lead us out of the maze. And so um, the other thing, as Brad mentioned, is that we want to be bringing people together from different disciplines, math, uh, physical, and social sciences to share their insights. And again, across the many scales from, as uh, we mentioned, from nano to yotta, which is this uh, range. So we hope you're going to enjoy things and um, have lots of fun in the meantime. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions or about the, the program or the organization? Okay, uh, so if not, I think uh, we'll move into our first uh, lecture and Julia is going to be uh, chairing the session.